What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're going to be comparing gaming laptops in a spectrum of prices. And today we're going to find out how well each of these laptops performs when playing Far Cry 5. For this Acer Nitro 5, we're dealing with a quad-core i5-8300H GTX 1050 graphics card, which is going to perform admirably in mini titles at 1080p. It's got a backlit keyboard, IPS display, a plethora of excellent ports. This thing has a one terabyte standard hard drive, so it's gonna be really slow. It's gonna be very interesting to see how it performs today. Stepping up to the Dell G7, the processor on this bad boy is an i7-8750H. IPS display, a GTX 1060 Max-Q. This is their gaming focused budget lineup. This guy was purchased for $1,079. Moving on to the Razer Blade 15, actually the smallest 15-inch gaming laptop out there right now. It features an i7-8750H and a GTX 1070 Max-Q, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, gorgeous backlit keyboard, 100% sRGB, 144 hertz display, and this guy retails for right around $2,000, but depending on the model you get, this particular model Retails for right around $25.99. Moving on to the Aorus X9. This thing features the most powerful laptop processor currently available. It's the i9-8950HK. This thing is capable out of the box of overclocking to 4.3 gigahertz, and you can also overclock the graphics card that comes inside right out of the box just using your command center. It's got a GTX 1080 in it, which is the most powerful graphics card that you can get in a laptop to date. It features a full mechanical backlit keyboard for a great typing experience, a 144 hertz, very colorful display that matches the razor blades quality, and of course it has a one terabyte SSD and 32 gigs of RAM, so it is definitely the king in literally all of the possible specs out of all of these laptops. This Aorus X9 retails for $3,900, and depending on where you buy it, you may have to pay for shipping or tax, so it could very well go above $4,000. Without further ado, let's get to testing these machines. Now we're running these tests on the maximum possible settings. Now the first test we're doing here is the Far Cry 5 benchmark. You can see that all three of the laptops has drastically different performance. Taking a look at the temperatures, we have solid GPU temperatures across the board. Only the Aorus X9 is getting a little bit hot, hitting 80 degrees. When we look at the CPU temps, the Acer Nitro is doing okay at 81 degrees. The Dell G7 and Ray Razor Blade, on the other hand, are hitting above 90 degrees and definitely hitting some thermal throttling on both of those CPUs. The Aorus X9 is doing just fine at 82 to 85 degrees, which is particularly impressive because we're hitting 4.3 gigahertz constantly on the CPU. In this initial test, we hit 34 frames per second with the Nitro. The Dell G7 manages a solid 55 frames per second, while the Razer Blade hits 82, while the Aorus X9 hits 110 frames per second on average. Now the important thing about the two cheaper laptops is that they only have 60 hertz refresh rate screens while the Razer Blade 15 and the Aorus X9 both have 144 hertz displays. Far Cry 5 is such an interesting game to benchmark because it heavily utilizes that GPU in a very intense way which amps up the temperatures and makes it harder for the CPU to stay cool as well. And that's because laptops traditionally share at least one heatsink across both the CPU and GPU. But that will vary from laptop to laptop. For this test, we're running along a path in a forest. Once again, both the Dell G7 and Razer Blade struggle to keep the CPU temperature under 90 degrees, while the Acer Nitro and X9 perform admirably, staying consistently below 90 degrees Celsius. What this means is the Dell G7 and Razer Blade will definitely be CPU throttling, and you might see some minor performance decreases during this throttling. Well, the Acer Nitro and Aorus X9 are gonna be more consistent with their performance. Taking a specific look at the Acer Nitro 5 on ultra settings, this thing really isn't able to keep up. We did lower the settings down to the lowest possible, and we managed to get 51 in the forest and 50 on the benchmark. That definitely is enough frames per second to get smooth gameplay, 
but it's not hitting the ideal 60 frames per second. Taking a closer look at the Dell G7, we're hitting an average of 55 frames per second, which is just not quite enough. So you probably want to bump a couple of the settings down to medium or high to make sure that you hit above 60 frames per second. Now with the Razer Blade 15, we're hitting a solid average of above 80 FPS, which is a significant improvement. Now my main area of concern here is the CPU temps hitting above 90 degrees. We are definitely seeing some thermal throttling here and some power limit throttling. Overall, this is pretty solid performance, but I would be concerned about long gaming sessions and potentially seeing additional thermal throttling on that CPU because of those high temperatures. Taking a look at the Aorus X9, we're hitting consistently under 90 degrees and having a stable clock at 4.3 gigahertz, as well as maintaining a GPU boost clock close to 1900, which is the ideal range as a minimum. Overall, we're averaging close to 100 FPS in this forest run test. Taking a look at the average of all the tests combined, the Nitro hit 34 FPS, the Dell G7 hit 55, the Razer Blade 15 managed a solid 80 FPS, and the Aorus X9 did a solid 100 FPS on maximum possible settings. Taking a look at the frames per dollar graph, the Nitro 5 and Dell G7 are both right around $19 per frame. Well, the Razer Blade 15 manages a $32, while the Aorus X9 manages a whopping $39. And this just goes to show you that if you're gonna want the maximum possible performance, you're gonna have to pay that premium cost. And that's it for this test of Far Cry 5 with these four laptops. What do you think? Which laptop do you think is the sweet spot? One thing I will note is that the Aorus X7 is a better bang for the buck with nearly identical performance, if not better performance, if it is tuned correctly. So if you wanna check out the full review for the Aorus X7, I'll have a link in the description and I'll have links to all of the laptops in this test in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Brandon out.